This week we have a special edition of The Debrief for you. We were able to spend a little bit of time with the family of Chase Kowalski. Chase was one of the young elementary school students who lost his life here in the tragedy in Newtown. His parents, Becky and Stephen Kowalski, say they are finding strength by looking forward. They want people to know a little bit about their boy, but they also want them to know how they plan to help other children here in Newtown in Chase's memory. So Becky, you really want uh, viewers to get a sense of Chase, and there's no better place than right here. I mean, you have some of his artwork out for us, but just kind of take us through some of this. This is what I was struck with, him writing a letter to Santa, but he did it early. He did. He did it probably two weeks before this whole thing happened. His spirit was so big and, and, and went into so many different directions yeah. that you just, I, I could never hold him back on anything. He always found something good in somebody, you know, and, and always shared and was just... He was a great soul, and he was an old soul. Every night I'd um, put him to bed and lay down with him, and we'd have some pillow talk. Just, he wanted to stay up. He didn't want to go to bed, right, right. <laughs> like every kid. Um, and it was great. It was, it was our special time together. Yeah. Big fan of Jimmy Johnson, tell me right. Huge, the, huge. The race, NASCAR. Yeah, my husband's big into NASCAR. Okay. He used to race cars, so, you know. If it's got a motor, we were doing it, and uh, he loved it. I remember just the, after he had a bath and he smelled like bubble bath and, and you know, little newborn baby smell. It's the snacks. It's the snacks I miss. Yeah. The grocery store, you know, going and, and, and getting cheese sticks and Doritos and pirate booty and, you know, all these things that he loved to eat. And loved American flags. Loved American flags. He loved his country, which... You know, you think about it, at seven years old, you, you don't even really know that much about your country yet, but he, he, he loved history. Becky Steve, first of all, you know, your friends told me this and I find this. When you come to visit you, I find that I'm strengthened by you. In other words, you help everyone else who comes to this household kind of deal with the aftermath of that. How is that? Where does that come from? It was my vision. <laughs> it was totally, it's my son and it's God coming through me. Um, it was a gift. Um, Friday was horrible. It was a nightmare. But because a friend told me she thought she saw Chase, I was able to deal with that and, and be able to give the information that needed to be given. So he was identified. Um, Saturday was a blur, you know, friends in and out of the house. I went to bed Saturday night and um, Friday night I took a pill to go to sleep. And Saturday I said, I can do this without a pill. And I did, so I had a clear mind. And uh, I went to bed, and he came to me in the middle of the night, um, and he explained to me what we would experience. Um, he wanted me to tell his dad how that this, the, the funeral was going to be huge and, and that there was going to be people touching him and touching us and all these hands and, and just an amazing amount of people and support, but constant touching is all I saw, hands, like at a concert, looking at a rock star, just people grabbing for them. And, um, and they were grabbing towards Stephen, and, and Chase wanted me to tell Stephen, you know, it's, it's okay, this is, this is what's going to happen, but if he knew ahead of time, he could prepare himself and deal with it. And then he showed me um, the little fish from Finding Nemo and how they all have to work together in that to make a big fish and to make something change, to make something happen. And, and all I just saw were this, the fish working together and coming together as a whole. And, um, and then he just filled my heart with peace and I was changed. So you had the Chase Kowalski Fund and your idea with that fund is to raise money to build something for the young people here in Chase's memory, correct? It's absolutely, it, it's that, that vision of the fish and all these people working together and, and making something with one person, you can't do much, but with a whole community, with everybody working together, we can accomplish huge things. We can, you know, our first thought is one community center, center for the town of Newtown. That's the vision right now, but my, my broader spectrum on the whole thing, if I can get enough funding, if I can get the help and the resources, I'd love to see one in every town in the United States. Why, why should our kids not have a place to go to feel the sense of community? But that boy had a place to go years before this 
Would it have happened? I don't know. You know, I don't know where his life would have turned, but if we have gotten, if we can get back to the core values of family and being together and community and, and people not worrying about somebody else having a nicer car or a bigger house or, you know, this one's got an iPad, this one has, you know, doesn't have anything. It, it, the loss of the family unit and, and things like that, um, I just feel like this big community center would be a place for, for healing and for, um, for the town to just get to know each other on, on a straight level playing field. No, no big houses, no fancy cars, just this is where you come in and, and the real people come out. And reflective of Chase, who you say is very absolutely. giving, shared even with some kids that he wasn't even crazy about. Yeah, absolutely. Just to, to make it, to make the world a better place. I walked past it that, that Friday. That Friday, you know, I, I didn't not come in here. Um, in fact, I think at one point I did just kind of sat in his bed. My thought was, you know, he, he came to me for a reason. I never, I never knew my purpose in life. I never knew exactly, um, you know, I knew I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to raise my kids, but I just, there was, there was always just a little something missing and I could never figure it out and I never knew why. Um, and when he came to me, he gave me all my answers. I know why now. I know all these things that happened to me when I was growing up, our relationship, how he and I got together, that in itself is amazing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> here I am, you know, 20 something years old, dating this guy, he's really nice, everything's going great, and I'm thinking, yeah, he's too nice, I'm out of here. I'm gonna break up with him. And, and he sends me flowers, and he's never sent flowers before to any other woman, and he sends them to work, and I'm like, oh, and now I gotta stick with him for at least a week, right. you know? <laughs> yeah. And um, in that week's time, I fell in love with him. And I didn't just fall in love with him, I fell head over heels in love and couldn't picture my life without him. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't, we had, had the girls and, and everything was great, life was super. And um, then he said, you know, I said, hey, you know, we're gonna try for that boy. And he was like, I think we're done. I think there's one for you, there's one for me, life is great, we're good. And uh, I always wanted a boy. I always thought, every time I was pregnant, I always thought Brittany was gonna be a boy or Aaron was gonna be a boy. And both times I got girls and, uh, and then I said, you know, all right, you're, you're right. We were blessed with two beautiful girls. We'll, we'll stop there, it's okay. And then I found out I was pregnant. And, it, and then, and I was older, so we had an amnio, and I found out it was a boy, and I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. you know, it was like. And what did Steve say? <laughs> he was happy, yeah. you know, he said, we'll do this. Yeah. You know, it was okay, it wasn't a bad thing, but it was a surprise, you know, we didn't know it was mm -hmm. gonna happen, and, and he's our gift from God, he yeah. really was. Let me ask you, Steve, because, uh, you know, we get to know you, you're a strong, silent type. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, and this was so such a public uh, tragedy. Uh, how are you doing? Many viewers just want to listen. How are you doing? I mean, this was your boy. Uh, we're getting through it. I mean, it's it's hard. You know, every day it's, you know, I just go around and look and definitely hard. This was, he liked to run. Oh, yeah. Always moving. He always. Triathlon. There's not a minute that he wasn't doing something. Right. Uh, um, Watch me do this. Dad, can we yeah. do Dad, that? throw to this, throw to baseball, throw to football. The football. And just, can I ride the quad? The world claimed a piece of this tragedy for a while. It brought international media scrutiny and, and people were here and, and there's been talk about the healing. You give us an opportunity to see how you as people are healing, the most directly affected. Did the attention, has the attention helped or hurt? You know, there was a sense of they're ready for the media to pull out. You know, I mean, at some point we've got to figure this out on our own. Did you, could you even focus on that? Or tell us how this, as you got through it, because that's what viewers will want to know. I mean, uh, we went for yeah. walks the first couple of days in the early mornings and, and we got stopped twice, but they were very res respectful. We said we had no comment. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that our son was one of the, the people. Yeah. How about the how about the world just wanting to do something? They all, everybody just oh. wanted to reach out and hug yeah. you, that's, and yet was that at some time is that 
is that getting in the way of, of you trying to each family yeah. trying to figure out their process? No, I tell you, it's amazing the outpour, the things that people have done or have given or have shared um, from as as minimal as a toilet paper Santa Claus in a milk carton sled to as extravagant as jewelry, you know, a diamond mm -hmm. ring, uh, um, a Pandora bracelet somebody sent to me. This necklace is a soul necklace that it, it captures the soul. And I feel like that's part of my son here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the gifts have been so much from the heart, you know, and so thoughtful. Um, as you know, somebody sent a box of tissues, like a whole whole list, a box of tissues to to, to dry your tears, your tears yeah. um, water to keep you hydrated, a, a snack to keep you nourished, blanket to keep you warm, blanket to keep you warm, and um, I can't remember. It, it's just it's it's just amazing. Yeah. I mean, the thoughtfulness of everything. It's that's why I want to share Chase with everybody because he was a thoughtful person and he 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 just loved I think he loved the idea of love yeah. you know he yeah. always signed his cards to <laughs> me I love you and, and he wouldn't walk out the door wouldn't let me walk out the door without a hundred kisses mm -hmm. whether I was going to the grocery store or I was going to Australia you know it didn't matter I could be going down to get the mail and he'd have to have a kiss you know it he was just pure love and that's you know that's how I feel all these people have been reacting to us it's just they're heartbroken and I wish I could fix that and I hope that sharing my vision helps um, some of my friends that it's helped them um, and it, it's it's brought them a, a little bit of peace I mean yeah for her being strong it makes everybody yeah stronger tear up. I miss the little things, but... Let me point out, you do have two older daughters. You're trying to protect them as best you can from some of the public glare, but uh, yeah. I think you had a very candid moment of how helping them get through it and then helping feeling safe again. I mean, talk about that. They had to go back to school. I mean. Aaron, Aaron's our spitfire, man. Yeah. The, the first day that they opened the schools back up, she was on. She, <laughs> See you later, bye. And I emotionally was a wreck. I, you have to come home to me. You... I, I have to know you're coming back, you know? And, um, and she was like, yeah, I'll be back. Don't worry about it, Mom. Had no problem. Brittany, Brittany had a little bit bigger of an issue. Um, I don't know if she just didn't want to deal with too many people coming up to her. She's yeah, very she's more private, like, me. like Steven. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, she's very quiet, private, and, um, you know, doesn't, she doesn't like attention. She doesn't like to, to, to be noticed. Yeah. And, um, you know, but is there a feeling of, and it's only, we're only three weeks out. I'm amazed again at your strength. Safety. I mean, I don't know. And, and you know, Steve, I talked to other dads were dads and you're like, God, that feeling of feeling helpless in that moment because you weren't even, you couldn't yeah. even do anything. I mean, how do you, you still wrestle with that a little bit? I'm sure you will. Sometime. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it'll always be there. Yeah. You know, I got a family I got to protect now and do what I got to do, but. Let me ask you about a couple of issues. I know that you, I don't know if you can pay attention to it. It led to a lot of swirling in the public discourse about gun control, for example. Uh, have you paid attention to that? Have you given any thought to that, the debate that now rages and they cite Newtown? I think we started there, but we yeah. kind of backed away from it. That's not our fight. It's, it's not our fight, yeah, for yeah, sure. It's, it's not our fight. Um, gun control has been an issue for a long time, and... Um, I want to focus on the positive. I want to focus on change with family values and um, and structuring the community center. That's that's what I I want my son to be known as somebody who helped change the world because he did a community center and with any luck or or I don't even know the right word, but whatever I can do in my power to make it something that goes throughout the country. I mean, we're going to do one here, but there's no reason why somebody in Wyoming or Kansas or Missouri can't take that step and say, hey, you know what? Our kids need something like that, too. And it doesn't have to be a Chase's place. I mean, it could be in honor of somebody else. But if they get a community center built, 
then that's one more place that's a, a safe place for everybody to go to. Is that the name Chase's Place? Would that be a consideration? I would love to that's, have yeah, a Chase's okay. Place. In uh, my mind, yeah, it's Chase's sure. Place, okay. you know? Yeah, people There's come 26 aboard. people. Yeah. You know, it could be somebody's art room. It could be somebody's swimming pool. Yeah. You know, you know I would whatever love they to like to do. Highlight the kids in, in what they their interests were, I think, would be phenomenal. You know, if you've got football, baseball. Yeah. There's... So you guys are up for it, now the getting the town fathers and mothers on board and getting the fundraising yeah, on board this is it the fundraising it. getting getting anybody who wants to join us i mean this isn't solely for chase he's not the only person that perished yeah. um he's one of 26 and in any way that we can honor my son and all of those kids and all of those teachers and aides we'll do it we hold out our hands and and when people are ready if they're not ready that's okay. I mean, there'll always be a place for them with us. I feel like I got the peace that I, um, because he came to me and I can, I can do this. My grief is not so overwhelming that I can't move forward. I am moving forward and I'm not walking. I'm running just like my boy did. And, um, I will till the day I die, you know, and I'll have, you know, my, my family right next to me. And we'll all do it, and we'll do it in the best way we can. And I hope that when, you know, the kids that were in that school grow up and they go to college and they do good, that they want to come back and be a part of it, you know, so they can move and grow to become the best people they can be. Yep. And then you can start their families and, you know, just start... Let me just ask one more question delicately that I think viewers, when they listen to you, the, the grief, the sorrow is understood. We don't hear from you a lot of anger or any anger. And I just want to ask you, because you alluded to it a little bit earlier about you think family values, this would be a place to promote that. And, and you had a young man who did this uh, and he killed his mother. Have you given thought to that at all? And, and is there anger is there or, 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 or not? Uh, I mean, there's probably anger in there, but what are you going to do? You can't change. You can't know, turn back the clock. Can't turn up the clock, so it's we go forward, like she said. You, you know, know what? If I get angry, um, you refocus. <laughs> yeah, if I get angry, evil wins, and evil will not win. I, I refuse to let that happen. Um, and there was something wrong with him, uh, and I, uh, I have no idea what it's like to have a child that has any kind of mental health issues. Um, so I, I, I can't tell you what that woman felt or, or what she thought she was doing, whether it was right or wrong. Um, and I don't want to think about that. Um, I feel sorry for her. Um, I can't imagine that moment when he looked at her and did what he did and then turned around and walked away. Because I know in my heart, my son could never do that to me. And um, I, I feel bad for her. Um, but because I can't change time, um, I'm not looking back. I'm not getting angry. And I'm going to focus on the positive. I'm going to focus on the good that my son did before he died and the good that I can do in his honor and in, in his memory. And that's, you know, same with the gun control. I mean, I can't change that. I'm, I'm one person. I don't know how to change that. The people that are in place, they're working on it. If they need something from me, you know, I, I would help. I'm always willing to help. But my focus is staying positive, moving forward, working on, you know, families with that, that don't have a strong connection and, and helping them to build a strong connection with their, their children so that their children will always feel loved. So then when they grow up, they're gonna love their kids and they're gonna want the best for their kids and, and keep it going, you know, keep it, keep it all about the love, keep it all about um, family, you know, and being strong. Have you given thought about Sandy Hook Elementary itself, you know, there's all this discussion of what should happen there. Should it reopen? Should it be a memorial? Have you 
you don't know. I mean, um, it definitely. I, I don't know where uh, they're headed. Right. You know, we haven't yeah. really, we haven't really yeah. watched a lot of TV right. or anything. I have heard a couple things. Um, I have heard some people want to knock it down and and make a, a memorial. Right. Some people want um, them to build a new Sandy Hook school at at Fairfield Hills. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of that's true. I don't have a problem. I think it actually, if they were to build the the elementary school at Fairfield Hills, that's where we're potentially wanting to put Chase's place. And that would be great because it, it would be a walk across the campus, you know? Um, it would make it convenient for everybody. Um, if that were to happen, I think it would be fantastic. The The other thought of, you know, I don't think any of those kids from kindergarten to fourth grade should have to walk into that building again. They saw things in, in that they should never see. And um, some of them were fortunate not to have to see any of that. But if they were to open it again, I would want it totally changed, totally renovated. So they don't even walk through that front door. A, a new front door would be done. And then I would say that the building codes would have to change and that, you know, bulletproof glass or, or something, you know, the, the people that do that kind of thing, they, they could make those decisions. That's not my decision. Um, but I think building codes should change for it. I think um, security measures should be changed. Yeah. I don't think that, um, think I think that? there should be a couple steps to get to be access the children. Um, that it shouldn't be so easy as breaking down a couple doors and then just getting right into all the classrooms. Um, I don't want my kids to, to feel like they have to grow up in a prison. You know, that's not right either. You think, have you heard about the armed guard at every school that's been proposed? You know what? My oldest one's in high school. There's a there's a security guard there. I have mm -hmm. no problems with that, you know. Um, you think it could help? Or no, you think really? other things structurally need to change? I think it all, it all has to work together, yeah. you know. It's, yeah. all right, that's not a real family, but that, you know, you, you need other things in place to work it together. Mm -hmm. Things all have to come together and be coordinated to make it functional. And if it's not, if it's not, you know, one piece is left untied, then it, it still doesn't matter how many armed guards you have. If they're not working in unison, they're not going to work. So, so the people that need to make those choices and make those decisions need to get it done. They need to get it done quickly. You know, they need to make the necessary changes. They need to step up. You know, stop worrying about piddly things and, you know, yeah, our, our elementary schools have to be the most vulnerable. But I don't want the kids to ever feel that they're in a prison, you know. It, it's just, it's not fair to them. I mean, they still need to be kids, you know. And that's why you had asked me before about going back to the new Sandy Hook and Chalk Hill. And I made great memories there as a kid, I loved it. I had no no issues when they said that they were bringing them there. I thought, that's a great place, you know, it, it's perfect. And they, they updated it. They did the best that they could to, to make the kids feel comfortable. I think it worked. I think the kids just want normalcy, you know, they just want everything to be like it used to be. And they're trying, you know, nothing will ever be, nothing will ever be the same. There's no way, I don't have my chase.